Christina Underwood, formerly LUM, and I was a part of the 2000 Olympic artistic swimming team, uh, the one that went to Sydney, Australia. And um, I'm just really grateful and excited to share my journey and be a part of this My Olympic Journey project. Um, I wanted to first start off by saying a big congratulations to Anita and Lindy and Andrea. Um, just you guys were beautiful and inspiring and I'm so proud of you guys. And of course, to the national team, what you guys have been through this year is just, and what you were able to accomplish is just nothing short of incredible. You guys um, are inspiring, you made us all proud, and you guys truly are champions. So I was first introduced to artistic swimming when my mom took me to a water show put on by the Santa Clara Aquamades. I was from the Bay Area, so it was really close to my house. And I just remember sitting in the stand, just being in awe of what I was seeing in the water. And Tracy Ruiz Conforto actually was there swimming um, just shortly after the Olympics. And uh, my mom looked at me and she said, is this something that you'd wanna try? Like I'll try and get for more information. And they happened to be doing a summer program, which I immediately said, yes, I wanna be enrolled in this. And um, so I did, and it was so much fun and I loved it. Um, I actually remember Robin Roberts sort of pulling me to the side and having me do a couple of things to show some of the other coaches. And um, they kind of said, you know, I think you got, you'd be really good at this. So what do you think about joining the club? So I spoke to my mom and we signed up and you know, it was, it was an easy natural fit at the beginning. Um, little did I know that it would get hard in the winter because in California, all the pools are outdoors. Um, and you know, you're practicing a couple hours a day, but they don't, you know, in the summer it was great, but then in the winter it started to rain or there would be hail and it's cold when you're, when you're little. Um, so I remember just kind of thinking like, maybe this isn't for me. I don't think I want to do this anymore. And so my mom sort of spoke to the coaches and they sat me down and they just said, we think that you have a lot of potential. Um, if you really don't want to do this that's fine, but please maybe take like a week or two off, think about it and um, see where you're at then, but we really hope that you do come back. Um, so I went back and I did miss it during that time. And so I went back and the rest is history. <laughs> so my first national team appointment was in 92 and that was for junior team, junior national team. Um, I had actually tried out the year before that um, and I didn't make the team. Um, I was just devastated. Um, it was between me and another swimmer and after it was all done, I believe our scores were tied. So they looked at who had international experience um, and who didn't and I didn't at the time. And um, so they, they picked the other swimmer and I just remember just crying and crying and I was just devastated. Um, but looking back at it now, I really think that that was probably the best decision, you know, just because it, you know, things had come a bit naturally for me and I had success kind of just throughout my career since I had started. Um, and it just really sort of made me take a step back and look at everything and be like, okay, I am going to work much harder. Um, figure out what I need to do and whatever I needed to do to make that national team the next year I was going to do it um, and you know my coaches were great and they really um, my duet partner at the time was Kim Wurzel and so they made sure to send us to uh, I believe it was the German Open so they did um, take us internationally just to make sure that there was no other reason um, that we would not be able to make a national team um, but my actual year on national team was um, in 1992 and that was for the American Cup and my first experience was I will never forget it I mean it was amazing you know it's the first time on your national team you're getting the outfitting you're with all of these other amazing athletes from different clubs and you're coming together um, so that was really exciting and I loved it um, but the competition was in Florida, and that was when the big hurricane, I believe it was Hurricane Andrew, came through. Um, so we had to adjust all of the scheduling. So we were actually bumped up finals 
really early in the morning and we basically swam and as soon as we swam they said you have to get out i mean they had evacuation warnings they were like get out get out um pam edwards was throwing our we had won and we, we didn't get to be on the stands that she was throwing our medals at us as we were getting into the van still completely noxed wet suits makeup everything um, we were just trying to get out and, um, you know, my family was there, everybody's family who had come to the competition, nobody knew where they were going. It was just, everybody was just directed to different places in Florida just to evacuate. Um, so that was my first experience on national team. <laughs> so I was on the national team for nine years. And during that time I did solo duet and team sort of throughout my national team career, uh, junior national team, I did solo and duet and team. Uh, national team two, I had done duet and team. And for senior national team, I was a soloist for two years as well as being on the team. And then I also was the duet um, for, it was one year we did Goodwill Games and that was with Bill May um, because Bill couldn't swim um, for any FINA governed competitions. We weren't allowed to compete together. So that was the one competition. And then when mixed pairs were added to the world championships, we came back in 2015 and swam uh, for the year. I have so many people um, that were an inspiration to me while I was swimming, but I'll start off with um, Heather Simmons Crosco. And um, I was just really grateful that I had somebody that I could look up to who was an incredible, beautiful swimmer and I loved her style and she was also shorter and smaller like I was. Um, so it was just great to have that example. And I think also what I love about our club and just the sport in general is that you have all of these older athletes that um, can serve as an example. And I was fortunate that she was at the same club that I was. So um, she would get in the water with me and she would work with me and really, um, help me as an up and coming soloist. Um, and I think that's what's really exciting. Um, and what I appreciated too was that, you know, swimming at a club like Santa Clara, we had this top team, the A team that were just incredible and we loved watching them and you were, they're accessible. You know, it's, you can watch them and be inspired every day. And, you know, you had Becky Darwin Lancer, Jill Suddeth, you know, all of these people that they'd be training all day, but yet they'll still stay and help you and be in the water with you and work with you uh, to improve. So it's not just about your own career, it's about helping others and giving back. And, you know, a lot of us did do that as well while we were swimming, or we'd even go back after retiring and help out. Another inspiration of mine was my best friend, Carrie Barton Garten. Um, we started off as competitors and then we ended up teammates and of course sisters. Um, we just, you know, we came from very different backgrounds and she always swam with such heart and determination, especially when things got rough in life. And um, I always admired um, how she handled herself and um, I wish I had more of her qualities growing up. And um, she just was always an inspiration and still is. Um, and it's, I could say the same too uh, for Bill, for Bill May. Um, you know, I was his duet partner for many years, but I think what inspires me the most is that you're in a sport where you're different and, um, you know, you work really hard over so many years to, I guess, see change. And when you don't see it happening, you still continue doing what you love. And, um, Eventually things did change <laughs> for him and we were able to compete and um, 12 years later actually, but and that I'll go into that later um, But you know, it's just having a passion for something that you love so much and continuing to do it despite the odds um, I think that's pretty incredible my experience at the Olympic Games, it's a bit hard to put into words. Um, my most memorable part, I think, was probably the opening ceremonies. You know, just waiting in that tunnel and you're, you're shoulder to shoulder with the other athletes and, you know, you look around and you're, you're there with your best friends and your teammates and your coaches and just the energy in that tunnel was just so electric. And 
it was very overwhelming emotionally. Um, you know, you start reflecting on your whole journey. You know, every single person in that tunnel had a journey and, you know, has a story behind them. And you just start thinking about all of your coaches and everyone that contributed to getting you to that point. Um, you know, and then you step out into the stadium and then you see all the other countries with all of their best athletes. And, you know, I think, I think Carrie and I probably cried the whole entire time. Um, and, you know, it's just, it was very overwhelming, but still completely amazing. And I also remember being in the village. We had these little homes um, that were created for the Olympics and were going to be um, given back to the community for people to live in, which was pretty cool. Um, but I just remember being in our house and, you know, down the street, you know, you have all these other sports that are living across the street from you or next door and you're just there mingling with all of the best athletes in the world. And um, the whole experience was was really special and magical. <laughs> so one of the setbacks that I faced, I was the soloist um, in 1998, as well as being part of the team for the world championships. And um, I had a pretty bad back injury that I got when I was being thrown from a lift. I landed a bit funny and hurt my back uh, pretty badly. And um, it was a struggle because it was super painful and I didn't want to lose the opportunity and miss out on being the soloist or being part of the team. Um, so my advice would be to make sure that you are maintaining your body correctly. Um, make sure you're open with your communication, speak to your coaches. Um, that was something that I think I wasn't very good at. Um, and there's so many resources now to help everybody. Um, with just even like what you're going on mentally, how you're dealing with things, um, just physically. Um, I just think make sure that you're doing it the right way. Uh, keep your communication open. Um, I know it's hard to not be 100% and not do things at your best. So I think that's where I struggled a lot. Um, but, you know, eventually I was able to get through it and I was able to get it strengthened properly. Um, another setback would be uh, Bill and I had done the mixed duet for many years and our goal was to be able to compete at Venus Sanction competitions um, and we really pushed for that and um, it basically every year it was just nothing happened nothing happened and you know it was frustrating you know because you want to do um, what you love doing and you want to be able to compete with the best and it just didn't happen so the we made the decision um, to retire and move on with our lives. And it was just kind of something that always left a void. Um, but that sort of leads me to my next probably biggest challenge that I've ever had in my life. Um, and that was in 2000, well, 2014, um, because the World Championships was in 2015. But in 2014, I got a phone call uh, from Bill saying that they had added mixed duets to the world championships. And at the time I was eight months pregnant. I was huge. I was like the size of a hippo uh, laying in bed. I'm talking to him about this and he just says, I can't imagine doing this with anybody else. Um, so will you be my free duet partner? And uh, Christina Jones was going to be doing the tech with him. And I just remember laying there like thinking like, how is this even possible at the time? It was November, I was gonna be giving birth January, beginning of January, um, and the competition was in July. I mean, it's just something completely crazy. And my husband um, is there and he just looks at me and he just said, you have to do this. He's like, you know that you will regret it if you don't. And I knew that he was right, but when you are the size of a house, <laughs> um, <laughs> things don't seem very possible at that moment. Um, so I just started trying to wrap my head around things and I just said, okay, you know, let's just do it. And I just try to really, you know, I, once I committed to something, I'm like, this is, this is it, you know, but, um, of course I had work that I had to deal with also. So I had a meeting with, um, my coach, um, at the time. And I just said, this is what I'm thinking. Um, I don't even know if this is possible. So I know that I have to give birth. I have to come back to work. Um, it was supposed to be in March, I believe, because it's basically you do six weeks after the baby's born, you have to go back to work and then you have six weeks to work out and you know physically get back into shape and pass the tests that you need to do um, to make sure you're physically, physically okay to be in the show. 
Um, so we sort of had this timeline that we were doing and I just said, I don't know what I would need to do, if I would need to not return to work or if I could come back to work and then um, train for Worlds at the same time and go to the competition. And they were really supportive and they said, yes, of course, you have to do this. Like, this is what you trained for all those years. This is what you were doing. And now your dream can finally become reality. Um, so yes, of course, we'll, we'll make sure that um, you're able to do this, which was amazing. Um, so then it was just really trying to, okay, once that baby's born, let's get to work. And that's exactly what I did. It was, you know, I, I made sure I was smart about it also. I just want to emphasize that. Um, I didn't want to do anything to jeopardize um, the health of my daughter also. So, you know, it was my body knew what it was supposed to do to go back to work. Um, and when I spoke to them, they just said, we know that you know how to get back into shape for the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to train you for worlds, you know, and I was lucky that I had so many resources to turn to and I had the best trainers that were looking after me. Um, so once we kind of got the clear from the doctor for me to go back to work and to start training, um, that's what we did. And we, we took it slowly. Um, but not only was it, I was trying to get back into the show because work was also a priority. I had to do that first. So any work that I missed, I was not allowed to train for worlds or do anything outside of work. Um, so I had to make sure that I was healthy enough to do the show. So on top of that, I was learning how to do new elements. I was learning how to do all of the physical testing that the national team now required, which we didn't have to do when I was uh, competing. Um, and so I was on a, a timeline too. So it was when I was giving birth was the was when the other guys were um, actually doing the testing to qualify for national team. So I had to petition to be a part of that. Um, so it was just not only physically, it was very challenging. It was mentally challenging as well. You know, I had to get a lot of my ducks in order to be able to do this. And I had a great support team. Um, my husband's family flew out here from England to basically babysit and to follow me around with the baby while I was at the pool. So she would come to the pool with me in the morning and basically set a timer. So we knew exactly when I had to get out so I could breastfeed her and then get back in and continue training. Um, and then, you know, she would come home with me, make sure everything was taken care of. And then I would go off to work to go train to get back into the shows. Um, so that in itself was very hard. It was a very demanding schedule. Um, and not only that was, you know, you're kind of dealing with the people who are, are doubting you, you know, and I, I understand why um, you have people that are thinking that maybe I was not the right choice to do this. Um, but it was something that Bill and I had started and we really wanted to finish with uh, Chris Carver as well. And um, it was just something that, you know, I know that it was important to Bill and that Bill was pretty adamant about also. And um, yeah, it was just, you know, you're, you're trying to work in taking care of a family, now training for Worlds, which the style is completely different. Um, from 12 years before, because that was the last time I actually did competitive swimming, you know, and um, physically everybody sort of looked a bit different as well. And, um, you know, there's, I mean, there's so many challenges that this whole journey ended up having. Um, and it was hard and I had days that were, were really rough. Like, am I doing the right thing? Um, can I even do this? Am I gonna disappoint the country? Am I gonna disappoint Bill and Chris and Christina? Um, you know, most importantly, and uh, it was it was hard. It was you know like I didn't want to be a failure to my kids or my family, and um, but at the same time, I wanted to I wanted to prove to them like that time didn't matter, that you can do anything that you put your mind to. Age, there's no limit on age. I mean, at this point, I think I was thirty eight, thirty um. I don't even remember, <laughs> but you know, like, I mean, I was a much older athlete, you know, compared to all of these young kids out there, a much older athlete would have given birth six months prior to the competition. Would I be able to move as quickly as everybody else? Um, you know, I didn't want to, I just didn't want to disappoint everybody that had put in all this effort to support me and help me. And, um, I will say that 
that Christina and Bill, like they were, they were amazing. Like they were, um, anytime I had any doubts, like they were there, they were there to support me. Um, and of course, you know, Chris is like my second mom. So, um, you know, it was just a truly amazing team to be a part of. Um, very difficult, but very re rewarding at the same time, you know, and then it got to the point where we were doing shows when I actually went back into doing shows. So I'm working evenings and we're doing um, two shows a night, uh, five days a week. And then in the morning, trying to find pools and like find any, you know, which it's not as easy as it used to be either. Um, so we're just trying to find any time to, to practice and, and um, you know, fit in any any sort of choreography, you know, all of the things that go into prepping for worlds, like trying to do all of this before work. And then sometimes I get called in for rehearsals. So then, you know, you're working until 1130 midnight and then you're up early in the morning um, throughout the night trying to feed your child. And um, yeah, it, it was it was very hard, but, uh, you know, we were very organized and I had a great team of support and um, that really helped a lot. And so eventually my in-laws had to go back to England. They couldn't stay here forever. Um, but then my parents were off work. So then they they switched out. They ended up coming for the summer and um, helping out again. And um, yeah, it was it was just definitely an experience and something that it was very hard um but i'm very glad that i did it because it was very rewarding um to know the outcome that our dream kind of came to reality you know it was in 1998 when we first did that mixed pair to bolero and we knew that that was the direction that the sport needed to go into and so to be able to do it the right way um and the way that we wanted to do it um felt really good and um, to do it with a team of people that started it all was pretty incredible. Um, you know, and I, I will say that being at a competition also um, six months postpartum was <laughs> very challenging also. You know, I didn't really think about that part of it too, but having to, um, you know, leave, leave your kids. Unfortunately, they were able to come uh, to Russia to watch, but I wasn't able to see them. But the other thing that I didn't factor in was, you know, that I was still breastfeeding um, and bringing a pump to the pool. And at these worlds, which I hadn't really experienced so much security except for at the Olympics, but at world championships, it was there too. So you're going in and out of the village with these metal detectors, going into the pool with metal, metal detectors also. And you're trying to bring in your breast pump, you know, that it's got, it's battery operated. You're trying to explain to these Russian guards, like it's for a baby. Um, I'm trying to pump, and it, you know, like they were just so embarrassed and horrified that they just kind of just wave you in. You're like, okay, go, go, go. And so, you know, even like, thankfully all we had to concentrate there was just on the duet. So, you know, we would go and practice and then I try and make time to, you know, pump on the side of the pool while I was there. Um, but yeah, there were just so, so many, you know, little challenges on top of this one big giant challenge. But, um, I will say that, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly proud, um, to say that I, I did it. And, you know, 12 years later, a dream came to reality, you know, like I never thought that that would happen. Um, and then when it did, it wasn't the best timing, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it was special. Um, and, uh, it's something that I'll, I'll never forget. Artistic swimming is still a part of my life today. Um, I was actually in the show La Rev at the Wind, um, here in Las Vegas for the past 14 years where I was a professional artistic swimmer. Um, and unfortunately the show's closed permanently, but um, I still do gigs now and then. Um, but I think this sport's always gonna be a part of my life. It's everything that I've learned from it. You know, all of the teamwork, determination, success, failures, um, all of these really valuable life lessons that have carried over. And then of course, um, my, my teammates and my sisters, you know, it's, this sport has given me such a family and um, I'm so appreciative for everything that the sport's given me and it's something that I carry over um, 
to my life now and I hope to pass that on to my kids as well. Um, I think, you know, just having a sport like this is, um, it's very important. It's very uh, special and um, I hope they get to experience everything that I have um, that the sport has, has given to me.